In 2024, my goal is 50,000 followers. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to do it. This year, I've grown from 1,000 followers to 11,500 at the time of this video. So in this video, I'm going to outline the five strategies that I plan to use next year to hit 50,000 followers. And if you implement all five of these, I reckon you're going to see massive growth as well. The power of suggestion. I've actually only learned about this one recently, but I have seen a massive spike in followers since I turned it on. Sorry to interrupt, but literally while I was editing this video, I've hit 50,000 followers. So if you needed any more evidence that these tips work, this is basically it. I mean, I've hit my 2024 goal already. I'm going to have to make it 100,000 followers to try and have something to strive for next year. So definitely keep watching this video. I promise you it's worth it. What you want to do is make sure that you're utilizing the suggested profile feature. Now this tip works particularly well if you're in a very defined niche. So for me, if you don't know me, my name's Logan and I run a parenting page called Kiwi Dad. So my niche is all about parenting. So to get suggested profile, you can't actually do it on a mobile device. You have to jump on to a computer, to a desktop. And for this very reason, most people don't have this feature. A quick explanation, whenever someone follows an account in a similar niche to you, your profile may be suggested. So on a desktop computer, jump over to your Instagram page and then click edit profile. Then scroll down a little bit until you see this box. It should say something like show account suggestions on profiles. You want to make sure this one is ticked. Then click save. Great. Now, anytime someone follows a page that Instagram sees as similar to yours, you're likely to be suggested. To make this even more powerful, go follow a couple of other accounts in the same niche as you that are doing a lot better than you are. So for me, I'm going to go follow this guy called The Dad Vibes, and he has a lot of really good content that's quite similar to mine, except he has 300,000 followers. So I'm going to go through some of his posts, and then I'm going to like and comment on a few of them. And that just gives Instagram a bit more data that the accounts I interact with seem very similar to my own account. So when someone follows the dad vibes, they're likely to suggest Kiwi Dad as another account to follow. And then just to be extra sure, I'm gonna go follow a couple of other pages in my niche. So this guy, the tired dad, very similar, has reels kind of like mine, way bigger following. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to like, and I'm going to comment. Instagram now very clearly knows that I'm in this sort of dad parenting space. And so whenever someone follows one of those kinds of accounts, they're going to think, huh, if you like him, you're really going to like this guy. Kiwi Dad. And so I'll get a little piece of their traffic now going my way, which never would have happened unless I had suggested profile tips and I commented on their pages. So it's totally worth doing and it will cost you nothing to do. Don't reinvent the wheel. The best way to grow is to see what other people in your niche are doing and sort of copy it. So what I used to do is go on an account and then try and find, you know, what videos they had that were doing best. And I would scroll through and try and find it. Now, this can be quite time consuming, but I've nailed it down to a pretty easy system that you can implement. So there's a bunch of tools out there that let you compare different Instagram pages and see kind of what their best performing videos are. But most of them have monthly subscriptions and they can be pretty pricey. And I don't have a whole lot of money to play with for my page because I don't make a whole lot of money from it. So I'm always trying to find a way to basically do that, but for free. And I found a way. So I'm going to explain how I do it now. So the tool I've been using is called Ince Track. And it is a paid service, but they have a free membership that if you use it in the right way, you can get everything you need. Let me show you how. So Ince Track lets you look at your own Instagram account and then one other. So to start with, let's look at my account and you actually get quite a bit of useful data. Like I can see here that I gained 370 followers this week, which, you know, maybe I could have manually tracked that, but having it just provided for me, super cool. But the real sort of power behind a tool like this is when you jump over to your posts and then I'm going to sort it by the last 60 days because that's free. If I do more than that, then I've got to pay and I don't want to pay. 
Then after I've done that, I want to click on most engaged posts. And now I can see all my best performing posts for the last two months. And I can pick up on sort of trends from that. Okay, why did that video do very well? Or why did that carousel do well? And then I can double down on that. I can then try and make more content that is similar to that because clearly it's resonating with my audience. So jumping back now and looking at the second account that I'm tracking on Instrap. And at the moment I've got one called Whole Parent, which is a dad that gives sort of gentle parenting advice. It's the same deal. I'll go over to posts. I'll go for the most engaged posts. Posts, and then I'll go for the last 60 days. Then I'm going to go through his most successful posts and I'm going to put them into my content calendar. Side note, this content calendar is completely free. It's on my BMC page, which you can find in the description below. So what I do is I go through each video and then I just write down who it's from, what the kind of topic or title of the video was, and then a link to the video. Then, you know, I spend a few minutes doing this and I build up a base of videos that I know are likely to do very well. Now, here's where the freebie part comes in. So you can only have two accounts for free on Instrap, but you can just delete the account you just looked at. So I'm gonna delete whole parent. So I'm gonna add another account in now. I'll have a look at that dad vibes guy again. And I'll just rinse and repeat the same process. I'll find his best performing posts. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll go through, I'll look at them and I'll add them to my content calendar. And now I've just got even more to work with. And then through this process, you pick up on things. Like I can see that most of the dad vibes really successful carousel posts are the ones where it's seamless and seamless is when it's got that kind of image on one one slide and then on the next one it's still there and they kind of match up and so now I know I need to make more seamless carousels because clearly that's resonating with his audience and I want some of his audience side note if you would like a little tutorial on how to make those seamless carousels then I can make a video about it you can do it completely for free and it's actually not that difficult to do. So just comment below if you'd like to see something like that. Quick note, this channel is all about me tracking my journey on Instagram to grow my parenting page, Kiwi Dad. I'm not some Instagram guru or anything like that. I'm just trying to kind of share what is authentically working for me right now. I'm hoping with these videos, I can provide actionable tips that can help you. If that's something that you would like to be part of, then please consider subscribing so I know that these videos are of value. Thank you very much, and I hope we can grow together. The Carousel Comeback. In 2024, I'm going to put a lot more focus on carousel posts. Why? Because Metrical looked at 300,000 accounts, 1.4 million reels, and 2.4 million posts, and compared them between 2022 and 2023. And they found that reels are down a massive 76% compared to 2022. Now, there's a whole host of reasons for this. COVID's kind of gone now. There's way more people making content, so there's a lot more noise and competition out there. And a lot of people just aren't engaging on their phones. But one thing did increase, carousels. Their engagement actually went up 15%. And seamless carousels, those ones we're looking at earlier, had an additional 13% increase. So we're talking about a 28% increase in that carousel space. If reels are going down and carousels are going up, you really want to ride that way. So you really need to get into carousels. So I highly recommend, at the very least, you get into carousel posts. But really, seamless carousels are... They're where it's at right now. And on carousels, there's actually another type of carousel post that it's just kind of emerging now. Gary V has kind of been pioneering it. And from what he shared in his videos, it seems to be doing quite well. The idea is basically that you have a fixed image as your first carousel that has like a good hook. But then your next carousel slide isn't actually an image, but a reel played within it. And from what Gary Vee said with his analytics, those videos were actually getting more watch time than just reels on their own. Now, I have only just started to experiment with this one, so I don't have any data on if it's good or not. But I think it's just another useful tool to have in your toolkit. If you've tried this out, then let me know in the comments below. Is it, is it working for you? It feels kind of strange to me to have a, a carousel that then becomes a video but i don't know i'm curious to hear so let me know if it's working for you story mistake so we've recently heard from instagram that the story algorithm and the reels sort of feed algorithm are now kind of intertwined 
they used to kind of say that they were two separate things, but now if your stories don't perform well, your reels are going to be pushed to less people. In that same report, they found that people that were sharing their reels or their carousel posts into their story would actually have a contraction in engagement. And that's because users don't like to see something in their feed and in their story. So the two things should be separate. In particular, there used to be the style where you would kind of, you know, you post a reel up and then you would share it to your story and you kind of block it out. New reel, click here. And they found that that in, in the most significant way was really sort of a Ending users. People don't like it, don't do it anymore. I mean, I never really did it anyway, but if you're doing that, stop. Just don't do it, okay? The easiest fix for this is just to never share anything from your feed into your story. Instead, for story posts, just try experimenting. I've done a lot of polls. I've also just started to share like memes and stuff like that, just funny parenting memes. They seem to be resonating, they're doing well. And you know, sometimes I'll get 500 or 1,000 people interacting with that funny little posts which means that the algorithm of the stories is hopefully happy with me and then it will feed into my reel and carousel. The biggest change that I'm going to make in 2024 is my hooks. And I know you've probably heard a bunch of Instagram guru people tell you that you need better hooks, but they often don't really kind of give you a structure on how to do that. So what I've done is I've put together all the different hooks that I've found from different resources online or videos I've watched, and I've just chucked them into my free content calendar, which you can just get in the description below. And really, if you just implement these hooks into your videos, you're going to have way better retention. Because sadly, even if your videos have a lot of value, if you don't manage to hook your audience in, they're not going to see it. So invest time making a good hook. Make sure your hook is really worthy of someone's attention. And yeah, just borrow from my content calendar and, you know, adjust it. Don't do it exactly that way, but adjust the template for how it fits with you. And you're going to get way better reach and way better outcome. So don't, you know, neglect the hook. Focus on the hook. Make sure the hook is powerful and hook those viewers in. If you want to level up your Instagram game even more, then make sure you watch this video on the best times to post or this video on how to grow your reach. As always, I hope this video was useful for you. If you want to grow with me, then please like and subscribe and leave a comment. I always appreciate and respond to every comment. Thank you very much. Ka kite, and I'll see you next time.